Good evening out there. This is, uh, well, it's afternoon here at the moment, about three o'clock. Um, this is Catherine. We are in Christchurch, New Zealand. It is 20th of May, 2014. And a conversation with uh, someone the other day mentioned, uh, anyway, we're talking about Toro. T-O-R-R-O. And, um... This was manufactured in New Zealand. I'm guessing it was exported around the world. And I'm going to show you some. Um, when it started and finished, I don't know. I do remember... Um, oh, well, what is it? Um, well, first of all, pretty much, unless you've been living on Mars, you're familiar with Lego, as in the plastic bricks you can make like little houses out of, a children's toy, a construction toy. And people will also be familiar with Meccano, which is um, metal, and it's uh, got uh, little metal girders and nuts and bolts, and, and that can be used from older children right through to adults, where they make very extensive, you know, great big things and um, that work. They've got electric motors in them, little cranes and cars and all sorts of things. So, but most people are familiar with the concepts of Lego and Toro and uh, Meccano. So, um, New Zealand actually manufactured its own sort of equivalent called Toro. And there were... The, the range included a brick that was compatible with Lego and it included a a um, engineering or construction set similar to Meccano but it, very much larger and, and plastic. And I'm going to show you some of this. Um, I had some bought for me as a child as like Christmas presents and that kind of thing back in the 1970s and you could still get I remember get seeing um, I think supermarkets or toy shops were selling some um, like expansion sets um, back in the uh, early 80s. I'm just going to, excuse me for just a moment. That's all right. The counter's displaying. I just wanted to make sure it was working. It didn't display. I've got the other television set up here. So here we go. This is um, um, Toro. So, um, Good quality collections are obviously hard to come by because most of it ended up outside in the sand pit or went up to went up the tube of mum's vacuum cleaner back in the 1970s and 80s. Um, but about probably about five years ago, I was looking on the uh, Trade Me, which is New Zealand's equivalent of eBay because uh, nobody likes eBay in New Zealand. Well, Trade Me got a big foothold early on, so there's an eBay.co.nz. Hard anyone's here, everyone's on Trade Me. Um, and I bought a few, um, there was some advertised for sale, and I bought one or two, um, sort of, whatever was in the toy box. So it was just a job lot. There was a bunch of stuff there, you know. So obviously there's a lot of larger pieces. The smaller ones are the ones that more likely got lost over the years, went up the vacuum cleaner. Now, this I was very happy with. It's a, um, obviously this is a boxed set. It's still in the box, and the box is in fair condition. It's fairly good condition. So this was the, well, there you go, Toro construction set. And it's kit one, so it's the smallest sort of main kit. Um, not counting a small expansion. Oh, and you can actually see the sign there, PDL. And of course, people in New Zealand know PDL. Uh, here we go. Manufactured by PDL Westport Division, New Zealand, a PDL company. Okay, now, Westport is, it would be unkind to say it's a hick town. Um... The West Coast is wild and woolly and people live in, over there and catch rabbits and farm dairy cows and all sorts. A Westport's the biggest town around for a while, but it's only a small town. Um, and to think that back in the 1970s it was manufactured, had a plastics manufacturing industry there. You know, I would have thought a few farm supply depot kind of things for the local rural community and fishing community, a bit of, bit of hunting and uh, deer hunting and that. But anyway... Um, and of course PDL, uh, famous throughout New Zealand, that made all our, our um, light switches and plug fittings and uh, wall outlet fittings, all those kind of things. 
Anyway, this box set, and when I got it, it was nearly complete. It was missing one or two bits. I'll just put the other side there so you can... I'll try to hold it. Not sure if you get a close enough view, you'll be able to read those writing on it. Um, and... Um, so this box set was nearly complete, but because I'd bought several other sort of toy box fulls, I, I ended up with pretty much, um, you know, lots of extra things. And um, I'll actually open this box up to show you what I've got in there now. Um, so I, I, I replenished what few parts it was missing, and then I put in a lot more stuff. And, and then, ah, oh, now the other thing I forgot to mention... Obviously, Lego doesn't just clip together with Kama Meccano. Lego brand does not clip together with Meccano brand Meccano. But with the Toro system, the Toro Lego compatible bricks were designed to fit in with their um, construction set, their engineering set. And um, so, let's just see what I'm showing you here. Um, and uh, Yeah, so in this, in this kit, I fitted in all the original stuff, um, and then I filled it up. Oh look, I've got a couple of roofing tiles here. It was something that Lego didn't have at the time. It certainly wasn't released in New Zealand, the roofing tiles. As you see, I've actually wiggled them in here to fit as much in the box as I can. Um, so there's a roofing tile there, and this is the ridge capping. So um, when you've finished doing your roof, you can put your ridge capping on, and it looks all nice and neat. Um, so um, that, that fits in there somehow. I fitted this all in. Um, and I've got the blocks. Um, so uh, again, these are similar to Lego. There was just seemed to be more variation. And of course, um, in New Zealand was... New Zealand's, a, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a bunch of islands a thousand miles off the coast of Australia. So um, we're at the end of a very long supply chain. And... When I grew up, it wasn't quite an, on a war footing and with rationing, but it wasn't far off. Um, so we'd, we got much l less stock of other things that other people got. And, um, and I know with Lego, we only really had sort of the plain rectangular bricks. And I, I did get a few special things, and I'm not sure if I got roofing tiles, but I got uh, special Lego bricks that weren't available locally because they were posted to me by English relatives as like birthday presents and Christmas presents. I used to like these ones. Here's one that, that uh, Toro had that I'm not sure that Lego at the time had. It's, I don't know what you'd call it, a double negative. It's, um, but it lets you put um, bricks face to face. And um, here I've got some wheels. And here you can actually see, if I get a brick ready, you can actually see the nobbles on the wheels and you can fit the bricks to them. That wants a little bit more force. Sometimes these have been chewed by the dog a wee bit, but... And up there we go, clips on. Oh, the other thing I should mention, a couple of things. The height of Toro bricks, from memory, is two-thirds the height of a Lego brick. So if you had th two rows of Lego, you had three rows of Toro, and that would that, that, match up. Certainly the pins, the pins and holes match up, so you can you can mix your Toro and Lego up. Um, and uh, the other thing, and I'll lift out this piece of construction set or engineering set, these little holes along here. Now, there was an expansion pack you could get didn't come in any of the sets. And it was these tiny little wee things that almost like the end of the red on a match. And the, the little, it was teardrop shaped. So the, the thinner bit went in here and the thicker bit poked out. Now what that did, if you put eight into these little holes, if you pick say a, eight of those holes and put these little teardrop things in, you could then put your brick there. So you could actually link your, your Lego style Toro brick to the Meccano style uh, Toro engineering or construction set. So um, 
I actually had some of those because I'd bought them as expansion uh, items in my childhood. And needless to say, when I got up amongst all of the Toro I got, I got absolutely none at all of them, not a single one. Uh, because obviously they're so small, they, they went up. Uh, here's a very small roof tile capping and um, a, a one, one, one blip by two blips. I don't know what you call that. Um, but yeah, these things were not much bigger than a grain of rice and they've uh, just all gone up the vacuum cleaner over the years. I got a total of two booklets in various conditions. Obviously one of these would have come with every set. And um, so this one's in, well, whatever condition it's in. Um, I don't have an easy way of capturing these on still and putting them up. Uh, uh, linking them directly to the video. Um, I have got a few extra lights rigged up here, so hopefully this will be coming out all right. Um, so... And it's indicating what can be built with what set. I think these books were probably quite a good find. Um, they are the sort of thing that, well, they wouldn't have gone up the vacuum cleaner, but the dog would have chewed them up and, and whatever. And here's the, um, I'm trying to hold this steady. So this indicates... what the actual components are and how many you get in each set. Just try to get that picture as good as I can. Um, yeah, so... As it was, I... Um, ah! And this is a like a shop display of some of the expansion sets you can get and it's a shame that that uh, there's no way I can make this sort of come out clearer but um, you can see down the bottom there you've got sets one two three four five five was the sort of biggest set and then there was this you can see that's like a shop shelf display unit with a number of expansion options on it So I'll put this to one side. Um, I think the bricks are fairly basic. I did take some black and white photocopies of those. Uh, I, I went through all what I had and took out a selection of, of good bricks. Um, we've got a selection here, you can see what they are without me unsealing all the bag. And they had some interesting shape ones. Some things were designed with axles and wheels. There are a couple of these base units that you can build your little house on or whatever. Um, why have I got those separated? Ah, I've got these ones in a separate bag because this is actually Lego. And uh, you, when you rattle them, they make a different sound. And if you feel them with your fingers, you can feel that they are um, a more brittle kind of hard plastic. So that's why I've got the impact separately. And they were just mixed up, like, because if people had Toro and Lego, they'd just get mixed up, wouldn't they? Um, here's a lot of little ones, and you see there's even some little one oneers. I don't know what else you call them, the little one bricks. Um, as, and thin ones. Now, some of these I got were, were broken, and I think I... Um, I just did what I could to, to, I might have actually cut some to make good ones out of, I can't remember now anyway, but yeah, I did get some were quite broken. I think that one might have been much more broken and I got the best part of it I could. And the other thing I've got here, I always had the buff, um, I don't know what you call them, buff, grey, slate, um, roofing tiles. Uh, as you say, see there's a different, um, the standard ones are 3x3 three three, but there's corner pieces. There's ridge capping, there's, there's two width and one width ones, and uh, aha, and I've got a couple of these. Again, as I say, I sort of got the contents of some toy boxes, 
I can't be sure if these are Lego or Toro. They're doors and windows. So there's just a couple of them. Um, but yeah, I red, red roofing tiles. And all the ones I ever had were that sort of grey, slaty sort of colour. But red ones. So I kept a selection of them. I um, made up a... Uh, box of, of sort of leftovers and I've given some away as presents and I've got a few other leftovers and this here I see I've made a note is um, it, it's what amounts to a number five and I put extra in there anyway I photocopied uh, did a color photocopy of one page of the uh, handbook for that one um, yeah, it was about four or five years ago I put this here, so I'm refreshing my own memory what I've got here. Um, so you got these, I don't know, one of them's an equilateral triangle, one's an isosceles, I think, but I'm afraid I didn't take that much notice in maths class. Um, got these little brackets. Uh, uh, axles go through these brackets. It's one thing I was very short of was axles. And the clips. Now there is a clip. No, that's a nut. Nuts and bolts, there's a reasonable number of. They didn't seem to get too lost. But there's some little clips which are really rare. Aha. Now, I had so few real axles that... I went and bought dowel, dowel, and cut it. There was a shorter long, an, a shorter axle and a longer axle. Uh, I think one was just over 100 millimeters long and one was just under, so about four inches in the old measure. Um, so I actually went and bought some dowel of the right size and cut it into lengths to make up the equivalent. Now this is the genuine axles, the white. And as you see, they have clips on the end to help stop your wheels fall off, although they're generally a fairly firm push fit. These little clips, those you see are mostly red ones, um, that go towards the end of the axle, they are so rare, but by comparison with the other stuff. Uh, it, it was only because I got sort of searched in the bottom of some boxes and that, and those so sort of, you could well imagine, their favourite place to live was up the tube of Mum's vacuum. Um, Every set came with, what have I got there, nuts and bolts, um, now why is this in a box like that, in a bag like that, I think that this is a number 5, or is it, I've just packaged it that way, that's right, anyway, um, so I ended up, you had both the um, slaty grey colour, or the orangey orangey colour. Um, you've got a, a spanner with the two different sizes, plastic spanner and the plastic nut driver, bolt driver, whatever. Uh, so something I got a couple of, or some of these sort of balloon wheels, balloon, sort of fat balloon wheels, and again, most of these got lost. And they've got shorter and longer steel axles that push in there. And again, these are designed... Um, there are some blocks, Lego-style blocks, that these can go through to mount them. Oh, here's one of them here. Um, it would go through like that. You can join these up. You can, you can build your Lego, um, your Toro, Lego-style Toro block. I'll block on top of that. So there we go. Um, little box. Ah, now they did come with a piece of string and a crank handle and some hooks, so you can make like little cranes. Oh, and some cog get cog wheels or sprockets. Um, oh, and now something else, which is almost entirely lost. 
I'll see if the bag can show it. Now the red one there, let's get the red one round, that is a cog. Well, I don't know what you want to call it. The green one is a sprocket. Okay? So that green one is designed to have a chain. And again, this is something that was, was some of in the sets, maybe in some of the bigger sets, maybe, or you could get the expansion sets, and I had all these. And the um an actual plastic linked chain, um, a bit like a bicycle chain. Just seeing what I've got in this end here. Oh, there's the other little um, to go with a nut driver. So, um, yeah, they actually had a plastic link chain, and somewhere I found one chain length link or two chain links, and I did bag them up specially. Um, but they have similar to how the um, the little teardrop shaped nobble that goes in here to put your block on. Uh, certainly amongst all of the Toro I bought, and I bought from a number of different people, quite a number of sort of job lots of toy box lots sort of thing, and I didn't get even one of these. I wouldn't even know they exist, except that I'd actually bought them in the late 70s or early 80s myself. Um, but I did find somewhere I've got a little sprocket from the chain. Um, oh, here we go. I've got a short length of chain there. Can the camera get that without you taking it out of the bag? There you go. So there's a the length of the plastic chain. Um, I think I know now why. I think I had a couple of loose links, broken links, and I put them in with a friend set uh, just as an example of what it was. But, um, oh, of course, it needs the big, the big girder thing for making bridges or whatever. Now, it's just reminded me, as I unpack this box, I'm going to have to step away from the camera for just a moment. One of the... One of the places where I turned up and bought, and the guy had this, which I also remember, because I had one many years ago. The top of the box is broken, or is totally missing. Um, it's more or less complete, um, and I've actually wedged a few extra nuts and bolts and things in there. When I, when I was there, he said, oh, these were called Fantastics. Um, I can't vouch for the accuracy of that, but because um, the top of the box is missing and there's nothing, the box is all plain, what's left, there's no information useful there. Actually, there is a tiny bit of, there's a piece falling out. Just trying to read the uh, what it says here. The Toro system is manufactured in New Zealand by Regent Plastics Limited, Auckland. The Toro system is protected by the following patents. Painted applications and design registrations and patents pending in all other countries. And there's a big string of numbers. So there you go. Um, so Regent Plastics apparently are not PDL Plastics. Maybe they sold out the rights. Um, and as you see, it has this sort of big nut. This is why the spanner has got the giant size thing there. It's for these kind of... Um, pressure nut thing split it's got split in it these are actually most of these are broken um, and when you do that up it bites on the axle and stops it coming loose um, I had these and they're all right but th th you couldn't they didn't really have much flexibility of making much stuff you could make some stuff out of them but um, and they went together a couple of different ways and got these things here not quite sure what you do with them and somewhere oh here we go and again I had I think it came with one or two axles that hadn't been lost um, and they push in the wheels there so but uh, yeah so just a one axle that's not lost I think I've got one axle with this kit so yeah fantastics apparently is what it's called but yeah, I certainly had some of them many years ago. Um, so, Toro, um, New Zealand's answer to Lego and Meccano. Um, 
And if anyone still wants to buy some, this is uh, 2016 at the moment. It was probably about five years ago I bought, I bought, um, bought this. Um, yeah, just and it, including if you're overseas, um, yeah, if you're overseas, you need an account on the New Zealand Trade Me, and it, I think it's in the rules that you have to be either a New Zealand or Australian resident. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but otherwise, just check eBay.co.nz. Um, or check ebay.com.au a lot of New Zealanders move to Australia and end up living in Australia and they take stuff with them and then it gets sold off there I've actually got some a friend of the second hand shop in Western Australia found some little expansion packs of Toro and um you know, like old stock, just in a, in a shop somewhere, and and she bought them for me as a present. It was only like a few blocks in each little set, but it was very curious, and I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it may have been written as Toro with a single R. But you do have to watch. Um, there's like lawnmowers in that are spelt like Toro with a single R. Um, it's possible that in some markets. This was, um, they couldn't use the two R's, so maybe they only used a single R in some markets. But, um, there we go. There's Toro. So, um, still available if you hunt around on Trade Me. Um, but yeah, you'll probably just be buying a job lot, buying a bunch in toy, toy box, and you you tend to be short of the smaller things that get lost, got got lost over the years. Um, oh, and something I didn't realise um, until I got this. Um, hold this there. You see, most of the little box is blue. Oh, and I remember when they were new, some of these holes were self-threaded, so you didn't need a nut on them. But they may have stripped out over the years. Um, but you see they're blue and yet here I've got a black one a yellow one and a red one so they were in different colours and again those, these large these cog wheels and these ones are not sprockets so they are cogs um, and as you see I've got the slate grey and I've got red so there was some things in different colours I've got the uh, big triangle there in white and the other ones are blue now there's a clip, where's the camera pointing, there's a clip for an axle, which as we discussed was quite rare, so yeah, and a sprocket, a couple of sprockets in there, yeah I ended up with, um, anyway, short of some things but generally more than a number 5 set, so, uh, and I did still have some spare, so, some leftovers. Alright, I'm sure this has waffled on for long enough now. I can't see the counter in the current television, uh, the way it's configured. So, I will take my leave of you. Is the camera going to keep sagging? Yes, it's going to keep sagging. Tighten it up. So, this is Catherine in New Zealand, and that's all for now. Okay, bye.